She persisted with the argument and said, yes, but you worship God in Jerusalem. We worship God in Gerizim, which is the right place to worship God. And that comes a little further in the text today. And that's when Jesus spoke those wonderful words that we often use as a call to worship. He said to her, the hour is coming and is now when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in in Jerusalem, in Gerizim, the hour is coming and is now when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit spoke those words to the woman at the well in Samaria, saying to her, it doesn't matter, Jerusalem or Gerizim, what matters is what is in your spirit. That's where you worship God. There is more. Jesus should not have spoken to that woman, not only because she was a Samaritan, but because she was a person who had been devalued by society. Later on, we see that she has been married and divorced five times and is now living with a man who is not her husband. This wasn't unusual in first century Palestine. By the way, the divorce rate within Jesus' society was over 90%. And there were many men and women who had been married and divorced seven, eight, or nine times, making modern Hollywood husbands and wives look like the image of <coughs> solidity and devotion. <coughs> but for a woman to have been divorced five times meant that she had no value, no status, no title. No self-respecting man would speak to someone like that except Jesus. Because Jesus understood that the wellspring of eternal life depended upon us setting aside all such judgment and arrogance and ignorance and receiving our sisters and brothers as precious and valuable and beloved in the sight of God. There were so many reasons why this meeting between Jesus and the Samaritan woman should not have happened, but they were all reasons based on human pride and arrogance and ignorance and a feeling of false superiority. Those are the things that make us thirsty. And what Jesus is showing us in this story is that the wellspring that comes up from within us, the wellspring which comes directly from God, is the wellspring that comes when we accept Christ as Lord and Savior. And in doing as much, acknowledge our own weakness and frailty and brokenness such that we cannot judge or condemn or push anyone away, but only recognize that everyone in the world is our our sister, our brother in Christ. That is the living water. That is the endless wellspring and once you begin to drink from that, you will never be thirsty again. There is a river already running deep down in your soul. You know where it is, and you know how to tap into it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.